were these people actually running legit businesses or were they just trying to scam their customers? You decide. Let's get started with number five, credit restoration. A Harris County woman scammed financial institutions out of $3.3 million with her business, Rose Credit Repair. Rokisha Lachey Brisby offered to raise people's credit scores in 35 days or less. She just wasn't completely honest about how she would do it. Between November 2019 and March 2022, Brisby filed around 133 false reports to financial institutions, including Alley Financial, Nevada West Financial, Discover Bank, First Credit Union, and others. These fabricated reports about the loss or theft of credit cards claimed to come from the constable's office. The goal was to defraud banks and erase credit loans equal to about $1.4 million in debt on behalf of at least 74 clients. Advertisements for Brisby's company, Rose Credit Repair, claim that by using the law, she would find and remove common credit errors. And by using the law, she actually meant doing illegal things to circumvent the law. But that didn't sound as good in a sales pitch. Brisby was discovered when one of the institutions involved came forward and made a report to the Harris County Precinct for Constable's Office. When the constables started investigating the report, they noticed things didn't add up. They spotted inconsistencies, such as clerical errors in case numbers that didn't match their system. Of the victims involved, Brisby used numerous forms of identification, including their names, date of birth, and social security numbers. Local Precinct 4 constables arrested Brisby on July 7, 2022, and executed a search warrant that recovered evidence to help prosecute the case. She was charged with felony forgery of a government instrument, and additional charges could be added as more evidence is received and reviewed. Despite her legal troubles, it seems as though Brisby's credit fixing days are not over. The Rose Credit Repair website still advertises live classes, tax preparation, and a variety of DIY credit repair resources for purchase. There's even a master class available with a video introduction by Brisby herself. Rose, which is the nickname Brisby goes by to her customers, has gained a massive following online and appears to still be actively posting on social media. Her YouTube channel has over 20,000 subscribers and the company's Instagram page seems to be the most active with 80,000 followers and content posted multiple times per week. Hmm. Number four, Youth Recruit. A Devon con man who created a bogus charity collection scam has been jailed for four and a half years. Jamie Montero stole more than 40,000 pounds from members of the public by scamming people into thinking he was collecting for sick children, war veterans, and the homeless. His scheme involved employing young people to collect cash donations and buckets on the UK streets of Devon and Cornwall. The phony organization, going by Youth Recruit Limited, sent teams of collectors to numerous towns and cities begging for money. Afterwards, they would reconvene back at their home base in Newton Abbott and divide the money between themselves, with Montero taking half of the cash for himself. None of the money ever actually went to charity. Unless you count Montero as a charity, then a good portion went to charity. During the trial, it was revealed that Montero exploited a loophole in the law that allows businesses to operate on the street without a license, claiming the employees were selling periodicals for money and the collection buckets were street tills. But according to the judge, while this would be acceptable for a legitimate business with written content like a magazine, the materials Montero produced at home were more of a prop, much like Montero himself. Useless and full of misleading information about the fraudulent organization Youth Recruit. The judge also called out Montero for having a huge ego and self-righteous attitude when confronted about his crimes as he somehow felt like the law didn't apply to him. That's always a really weird attitude to take with a judge. Probably don't take that 
attitude. To collect the cash, Montero typically used homeless or vulnerable people carrying what looked like charity collection buckets and images of children to appeal to people's sense of goodwill. Montero represented himself at court and argued that he had never made any claims that his business, Youth Recruit Limited, was a charity organization, but rather it was a company that provided opportunities to young people through the selling of periodicals. Montero did show some remorse though, saying he was sorry that he gave the wrong impression to the public. Montero was found guilty of five counts of fraud and was jailed for four and a half years. His co-defendant and right-hand man, Jordan Fletcher, was sentenced to eight months in jail. Number three, Florida woman again. Former Florida House of Representative Corrine Brown was sentenced to five years in prison for running a fake charity. She's to serve five years in prison for running a bogus charity that she used to purchase more than $300,000 in personal spending, including Queen Beyonce, long may she reign, and NFL tickets. Brown is a Democrat who represented parts of Jacksonville and Northern Florida for almost 25 years. She was convicted on multiple counts, including mail fraud, wire fraud, and filing false tax returns. After her indictment, she did not win her re-election bid in the Democratic primary. Brown formerly had a reputation as a champion of civil rights and was one of the first African-American politicians from Florida to be elected to Washington. Perhaps it was because of this reputation that her One Door for Education charity gained the trust of unsuspecting donors. Promising to help students fund their college educations and supply schools with computers, Brown and two of her cohorts raised over $833,000 in donations. But Brown had other plans for the money, mainly involving things that benefited Brown. The money went straight into her personal bank accounts, and about $330,000 was used to make exorbitant purchases such as box tickets at a Queen Beyonce concert and to fund sports tournaments. Apparently, the very same laws Brown helped enact didn't apply to her. Instead, she used her political authority to take advantage of the law. It seems that One Door for Education actually may have begun as a legitimate charity, but it unfortunately became a slush fund for Brown, her chief of staff, Elias Simmons, and the president of the charity, Carla Wiley. All three ended up pocketing money from the charity and withdrew nearly $100,000 in cash from ATMs. Although Brown pleaded not guilty, Simmons and Wiley decided to plead guilty and turned on their former partner in crime, testifying against her. Simmons was sentenced to four years in prison while Wiley received 21 months. Apparently, Brown didn't have any remorse for her crimes, and at the hearing, the judge criticized her for taking advantage of her position of power, stating that she should be held to a higher standard. She's currently serving out her five-year sentence. Number two, bend the truth like Beckham. The former brother-in-law, Victoria Beckham has been ordered to pay back 190,000 pounds of the illegal profits he made from scamming the elderly. Darren Flood, the ex-husband of Victoria Beckham's sister Louise Adams, was the director of a company called The Commodities Link. The Commodities Link, known as TCL, preyed on elderly victims and used Flood's family ties to David Beckham to trick them into making worthless investments. Flood and his colleagues conned at least 24 people out of around 810,000 pounds over the course of two years. Years, targeting elderly pensioners, including an 85-year-old woman who lost her entire life savings, their scheme destroyed lives and left people destitute. The victims were convinced to invest in worthless rare earth elements, which, despite their name, aren't very rare or valuable at all, commonly used in the manufacture of electronics. Flood and his colleagues used fancy cars and expensive London dinners to wine and dine the potential investors, while name-dropping to capitalize on Beckham's celebrity. The Beckham haven't been found to have any connection or knowledge of the use of their name for this purpose. The hero of the story is a bank manager in a NatWest branch in Woking who alerted Surrey police of a potential issue after an elderly customer tried to send £100,000 to a company that had connections to TCL. Flood was convicted of conspiracy to commit fraud by false representation and jailed for two and a half years. Six others were sentenced to a combined total of more than 20 years in prison for their crimes. Five of the the seven men convicted, including Flood, have been ordered to repay the victims a total of £370,634.80, split between them, some paying as little as £10. Flood was ordered to repay the highest amount, over £190,000. According to Matt Durkin, detective inspector and head of the Surrey Police's Economic Crime Unit, seeking a confiscation order to repay the victims was a difficult process but worth it due to the severity and nature of the crime. Number one. 
really private label. Long Islander Lindsay Castelli Bullock was busted in a $40 million scheme to pass off cheap garments as designer clothing. She surrendered to authorities after being accused of ironing designer labels onto clothes and passing them off as Gucci, Chanel, and Prada. She now faces charges of trademark counterfeiting in the second degree. The products seized by detectives would have sold for $40 million had she not been caught. On October 4th, 2022, Nassau County detectives raided the store where they found 22 printers that were used to create fake labels. These labels were then allegedly heat sealed on garments with an iron to make them appear to be legitimate designer pieces. Detectives also found knockoff items of clothing and jewels Bullock is said to have falsely passed off as being genuine. But the scam wasn't only happening at a brick and mortar retail shop. Bullock also founded a Facebook group for selling her counterfeit items called Shop Linnies. The group had over 5,000 members. Once prospective shoppers received access to a barrage of posts advertising the counterfeit goods, often modeled by Bullock herself. Police caught wind of Bullock's activities and began investigating her business in April 2021. They called in United States postal inspectors to assist with the investigation. Although the details haven't been revealed, the USPS investigation likely involved the seizure of packages so the contents could be evaluated and determined to be counterfeit. After a successful investigation that uncovered the nature of the counterfeiting scheme, Nassau County detectives executed the raid. We like to picture that one loose cannon detective showing up at the raid insisting that the clothing was counterfeit, but the chief who has a love-hate relationship with the detective tells him he was wrong on this one, there's only real designer clothes here, and to turn in his badge and his gun. Then, the scruffy detective dramatically rips off a Gucci label in front of a crowd of shocked reporters, revealing a Hanes logo. Then Bullock starts muttering and the chief shouts to take her away. This movie practically writes itself. Bullock, who has now been evicted from her retail store location, still claims she's innocent of the alleged crimes. Her attorney, John Shea, maintains that the charges are bogus and the items in question are t-shirts and wouldn't be mistaken for actual designer pieces. According to Nassau County Police Commissioner Patrick Ryder, Bullock's boutique has sold items under other names and shipped things all over the United States. At this time, authorities are uncertain if Bullock is acting alone or with partners. The investigation is ongoing and detectives say there could be more arrests in the future. Sounds to us like she still has a few issues to iron out. Click to watch one of these next videos. Let us know in the comment section what you think the appropriate prison time is for FTX founder SBF for scamming billions.